Our next item is page two, Toronto and East York Community Council, T18.52, uh, construction staging area, area for Bathurst Street. Mayor Tory, you held the item? Okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm that. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, with your concurrence, I realize we'll have to deal with them separately, and I have three motions on each of the three items, uh, 15, uh, 18 .52, 56, and 0.57. And those motions have been pre-circulated, and I'll speak only once. It's a three-for-one deal uh, in the interest of moving us along here. Um, and I don't, uh, Madam Speaker, at the outset want to go against, um, you may want to start that clock. I'm, I'm just trying to discipline myself. Uh, I don't want to go against what I said just a few minutes ago about, about the will of the Community Council prevailing in this case, but I think what's needed here, um, I, I can't even hear myself talk. Oh, Madam I know. Um, please? Councillor Matlow, Councillor Cole, Jennifer Keysmat. <laughs> Vic. Okay. Mr. Gupta, yeah, he should be singled out for yes. attention too. Um, I don't want to go against what I said earlier on uh, because this was a decision. These three were decisions of the Community Council. But I think, it, it, to me, it, it, if these had come from Etobicoke or from uh, Scarborough, I'd be saying the same thing. I just uh, have chosen a moment in time in which I want to register as the mayor uh, and as someone who's taken a keen interest in transportation in the city, uh, my own dissatisfaction, and I hope members of council will join me in expressing dissatisfaction in the resolution that we end up with uh, in some of these cases. Um, and I will say, by the way, that in many cases, certainly all three of these, they, they, they come to us, these recommendations, uh, with considerable effort having been put into trying to make these better on the part of the councillors. Councillor Cressy, Councillor McConnell in this case, they've worked hard with the developer and with the city staff to try and do better than this. But I want to stand here today um, as the mayor and as someone who has uh, expressed a great deal of interest in transportation and keeping the city moving to say these kinds of resolutions that are recommended to us that recommend lane and sidewalk closures for, and by the way, some, uh, some uh, consequent impact on bicycle lanes uh, in some cases are not good enough. They're not good enough, and, and I'm addressing that not to anybody in particular because I know the staff are involved, the developers are involved, but I think the time has come where we have to make a statement to everybody involved that the public interest has to play a greater role uh, in these recommendations and our decisions in this regard. What you have here, and I'm pleased to tell you, you'll see the first one on motion uh, on 1852. Actually, I think when Councillor Cressy and the staff went back, they were able to make a little bit of a further progress, shall we say, with the developer, and the result is going to be better in terms of less interference with, in this case, uh, car traffic. But on the east side, well, on the, on, the, on the Richmond Street, the two, one east and one west, uh, what you have here is proposals to keep lanes of traffic closed and sidewalks, in one case, for three years. Three years. And, and I think what that's going to do, it sounds strange to connect the two, is it will undermine confidence in the bike lanes. I'm proud of the fact, first of all, that there's so much investment taking place in our city and so much construction. I'm proud of it. It's a positive sign for the city. I'm proud of the fact that we put bike lanes on Richmond and Adelaide and they're working. I see it with my own eyes, the amount of traffic that's going back and forth at all hours of the day on those bike lanes. But make no mistake, when we do something to close a lane of traffic for three years and a sidewalk, it, it, if nothing else, it undermines the credibility of the bike lanes because then people go from a situation where we had a four-lane road, we actually took a lane out to put in a bike lane, and it was working fine, and then you take it down to two lanes and you put a bottleneck in for three years, and I think suddenly what you have is an undermining of confidence in us, uh, and an undermining of confidence in the bike lanes, and frankly, a disruption that goes on for too long uh, for people who are walking down the sidewalk or trying to drive their car, and I think it does end up interfering with cyclists as well. And so I understand the fact that it's a balance that we have to achieve, just like we have to achieve a balance these days in the 21st century on sharing the road as between cyclists and people who are pedestrians and people who are driving uh, cars and trucks. But I think somehow uh, this process over time has developed into, I don't want to call it a rubber stamp because that would be a disservice to our staff, but I think certainly the developers have come to think that they can just ask for any period of time they want and just close down lanes of traffic and sidewalks and that's that. 
And we tried, when I got here, one of the things we tried with the assistance of staff, and we approved, a dramatic increase in the fees that were paid to close a lane. And I thought that would have an impact, first of all, in, in fewer applications to begin with to close lanes, because people would say, I don't want to pay that kind of money, I'll find a different way. And secondly, it would impact positively on the duration of those closures when they happen. So people would say, well, instead of asking for two years, I'll only ask for one year or for six months. And in fact, that doesn't seem to have happened. And so these motions are meant to simply uh, put this over until our November meeting, uh, rather than say no, because if we say no, it could cause huge delays in these projects and so forth. This is to put these over with the clear intention that all of those involved, starting respectfully, I say, with our own staff, but through to, importantly, the developers involved, will hear us say, as a council, this is not good enough and we want you to do more and we want you to do better and we want you to take the public interest more into account in the recommendations that we are brought uh, to approve and that means uh, principally shortening uh, these times up uh, and saying we can do better in some cases when we push back on one that was up around Young and Eagleton they actually as we've done with Bathurst here able to find a way that the lanes of traffic could stay and the sidewalks could stay and they worked around it but that may not be possible here the one on Richmond West is a very complicated piece of land but I will just say this is a signal to say please do better and we'll give them that opportunity over the next month and it'll come back here and I'm confident they will do better just as Councillor Cressy and the staff showed with the one on uh, Bathurst. So uh, that'll be the speeches for all three, Madam Speaker, and I hope members of Council can support uh, this initiative to push back a bit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you do have a question uh, from Councillor Matlow. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, Mayor. Um, at the at Near the end of last term, I brought a motion forward to Council that requested that we actually work on ways to prohibit, and I, I fully agree with you, prohibit uh, the ability of, of developers to occupy public lanes, whether it be sidewalks or, or traffic lanes, uh, the way they do today. And uh, the feedback from staff was often that there were various reasons why it was difficult or problematic, or at times uh, if we said no, they would go and sue us and they'd get their way or whatever. Um, may I just ask you for an undertaking to, to really, you know, use what the ability that you have to, to work with staff to see if there are real ways that you can say to a developer, it may be more expensive to work on your own site and not take over public space as your staging ground, but, but we need the tools to actually be able to say not just pretty please, but, but do it. We're, we're serious. Um, I, Madam Speaker, through you, I, I hope I voted in favor of your motion last time because certainly my wish would be that we could, as other cities have done, uh, actually say this just with the exception of the very rare case can't be done. Other cities seem to manage to do that. And I think maybe what's going to be required, and it's not dealing with these three uh, matters, but is maybe a further escalation of the fees so that you get people to the point where they actually, just as a matter of sound business, do say, you know, there are other ways to do this. In New York, they find other ways. And sure, they cost money, but if it gets to the point where the cost of closing the lane is equal to or less, uh, more than the cost of doing something else, they will. So you have that undertaking for me, because I think that should be our objective, that in as few cases as possible, the public interest in the broadest sense uh, is interfered with by uh, what is a private undertaking, albeit a private undertaking that creates places for people to live and work and all that good stuff. So the answer is yes, you have my undertaking on that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Councillor Fillion, you have a question to the Mayor? I just wondered to follow up from Councillor Madlow if the same applies to the public under, uh, undertaking um, uh, work. I, it, uh, there was a backup at Bayview and Shepherd today at all directions lasting lasting 45 minutes because of work that the city was doing in the middle of the uh, right at the intersection at rush hour um, you know in law school they taught me never to ask a question to which you didn't know the answer and I, I really don't want this to seem to be critical of, of you um, I presume the work you're referring to is the, re the resurfacing work being done on Bayview Yep. And, and the city tried because I had indicated a very strong desire on projects like this to see us work 24-7, to see us work long extended hours to get the stuff done faster. And in this case, you, respectfully I'd say, uh, registered an objection to that. And so we're forced to work in, in daytime hours to get this done and it causes the huge backups. And, and, and the backups, I'll concede, would occur regardless 
um, because the work's being done. But uh, my objective with the speeding up, which we're doing in I think about 25% of our projects, is designed to get them done much faster so you have much slower, a much um, uh, shorter period. So, look, I hear what you're saying, which isn't to do, but you mentioned the particular example. I think we should be setting an example as well with public undertakings to do the same thing, which is to instruct our staff and the contractors to find ways to do these projects one lane at a time or whatever, such that they don't have to close large sections of the land. But on the one you mentioned, um, I, I have to say that we tried, and I still believe we could have got this done with much less overall disruption, including to the local residents with noise. Yeah. Uh, had we been able to work 724 or even until 11 o'clock at night. We would have kept Thank people you. awake all night if we'd done that. The question wasn't whether it should be done during the day, but should we be managing the construction so that we're not doing the intersection at rush hour? That, that we're we're trying, but I will certainly undertake to you as well, Councillor, uh, to, uh, to, to, to take that up with the group that I meet with once a month to discuss these things, because I think that's a fair uh, suggestion that, you know, sauce for the goose. It's sauce for the gander, and we should try to do these things better. And, uh, and, and I think you're right. I mean, doing it in the intersection at rush hour doesn't make a lot of sense. Thank you. Councillor Peruzza, you have questions to the mayor. Uh, I, I do, uh, I do, Speaker. He, he, um, um, he um, sort of triggered a, a real interest in me. On, on, uh, and, uh, and basically, I just wanted to ask him, uh, in following uh, Councillor Mantlow's, a line of thinking if he would take an undertaking uh, to to do the same thing at Keelan Finch for example with the with the subway construction because uh, what you've had there it seems to me that everyone the TTC the City of Toronto are essentially powerless in the face of the contractors who occupy our roads and I'll give him a, an example of something that I witnessed personally there uh, the contractor came in and said, we want to close this lane going north um, on Keel. Obviously, there's lots of restrictions there. We want to close this lane because we have some work to do in that area, and we want to do it faster. So therefore, if we get to close it, uh, the work will be finished faster. So they asked for a, a three- or a four-week permit at that time to do that. Uh, we gave them a permit to be able to work overnight and make noise and do all kinds of stuff. Then what they did... Your was, question. My question is this. They basically blocked the lane with these concrete pillars. And for like the month, two months that I was there, right across the street in a campaign office, right at the corner, not a single person went to work in that area. They just simply wanted the lane closed because they, they didn't want to, to have any, any contact uh, with the public. Your question. And when I raised this, my question is this. When I raised this issue with both the city and the TTC, we are powerless against these contractors who basically Cal threaten Cal to Cal increase Peruza, the your cost, question, your, and Cal they Cal basically Peruza. close these lanes. So would the mayor undertake to take a look at that and get that intersection opened up because they are killing all of the local businesses, Thank let you. alone the interruptions that they're... Thank uh, you. That they're and that was your last the local question. I, yeah. I will tell uh, the local council, Councillor Pruzza that I, I will, I, I meet once a month with the people who do this work and all the others involved and I will raise the issue because another issue that gets raised with me on a regular basis, Madam Speaker, is, uh, you know, lanes that are closed that seem, for st seem only being used for storage of equipment uh, or whatever and people just say, why can't you find a different place to store your equipment uh, or lanes, of course, that are closed and there's nobody working there, uh, which is why we're moving more to this kind of 724 uh, work wherever we can. Uh, and so I will undertake to do that. And may I just, before I sit down on the theory, this was the last question, uh, say that I would hope in the interest of the baseball game, which begins in one hour and 45 minutes uh, from now, that the speakers list, I certainly hadn't intended, Madam Speaker, by speaking on a three-for-one deal where I could have taken 15 minutes and spoken three times on this to trigger an avalanche of people who want to speak on, on something where we're essentially sending it away to get the work done. Uh, and I would hope that speakers list could, but, but by, by magic uh, process, vaporize in the next couple of minutes so maybe one or two people will speak and then we can move on because I don't want to be guilty of causing uh, what I was talking about earlier on with the time taken in here uh, on these matters. This is being sent away to see if we can do better both as a policy and in these individual instances. Well, we have four speakers so let's see. One just, one just dropped off, so that's good. Yeah, so. Deputy Mayor Minnewonk. Thank you, Madam Chair. I. I don't normally speak, but this is a 
important to me. No, I don't. I don't normally speak through, the, through these council's meetings. Uh, I won't speak to any other items. I, I can just tell you, because my residents use Richmond a lot, there's an express bus. An express bus. Now, the word express is, can no longer be used for this bus because 